How's it going, everybody? This challenge is for that 70s card show. The challenge was in recognition of his 200 plus subscribers. And the challenge was your favorite 1970s cards. And I just want to give one real quick shout out to creator of that 70s card show. Um, he was the first podcast that I've watched since I started um, getting into this community of card collectors. And uh, I just wanted to say thanks for uh, kind of leading me down all these different avenues where these people that show their cards and talk about cards um, reside. So without further ado, it w I want to just let you know, guys, that Today is September 27th, and I would be remiss if I didn't um, say happy birthday to the best third baseman the world has ever seen, Michael Jack Schmidt. Michael Jack Schmidt was born um, in Dayton, Ohio, September 27th, 1949. He's 73 years old today, and if I can of the 1970s that I selected is the 1975 tops set. Um, a lot can be said about this set. There's a lot of action going on in these cards. There's a lot of color going on in these cards. There's a lot of story going behind these cards. I just wanted to show like a few cards that I uh, looked at between card 1 to 660 in the 1975 top set. The arms race for the most amazing look of a card was going on in the 1975 tops cards. Uh, Gary Maddox we have here. Uh, Willie Horton. And... George Scott with what appears to be a shark tooth necklace. Reggie Smith. I mean, there's just shot after shot of outstanding cards. Um, Oscar Gamble always seems to be on the top five list for best cards. And then for some reason, this guy missed the memo to leave the 1950s and 60s and get into the 1970s, Bruce Ellingson. Of course, with every great set that have these players, I always wanted to make sure I mention Dick Pohl and Pete Lecoq. Reason why I got into the set is because of these two guys and how appealing and attractive that rookie card was of an established player when I was collecting cards in the 90s. And then also the George Brett. That 70s card show had introduced was um, significant to um, getting around and hitting around the Mendoza line. Um... If it wasn't for this gentleman, Mario Mendoza, um, it could have been some other player that they razzed and teased. Um, it could have been the Melendez line, the Bosman line, the something, but they just seemed to uh, want to pick on poor Mario for some reason when he came to the Seattle Mariners in 1979. I don't know if everybody knows this about how the Mendoza line started, but it did start in 1979 um, with the help of this gentleman, Bruce Bochy, when he was playing for the Seattle Mariners along with Mario Mendoza. And also this guy, Tom Pachorek, these two were the ones that, according to the stories, were the reason why 
this has been an established lexicon for batting below 200. It gained uh, mainstream popularity when George Brett used it in an interview saying that uh, keep an eye on the guy's stats in the paper that are going below the Mendoza line. So I just wanted to say that poor Mario wasn't the first and only um, player to have subpar 200 batting averages. We can't forget about Dave Duncan. Very well, the Duncan line. Or it could have been the Belanger line. Or it could have been the Rodriguez line. Or maybe the Kingman line. Or maybe the Brinkman line. I'm rambling on and on. I just wanted to to post my favorite 1975 Topps cards. Um, I do like the Herb Washington as well. Depicting the only time a pinch runner card was ever put out to the general public. And last but not least, I'm going to show you what I consider the card that gives me the biggest smile in the 1975 top set is card number 259, Len Randall. I just don't know where he got hit during this pitch, but it looks like it hurts a ton. I want to thank you, That 70s Card Show, for the challenge, and I appreciate you with your knowledge and expertise from the 1970s. Always enjoy watching your shows, and thank you, everybody, who tuned in and watched this long showcasing and rambling of the 1975 top set. Thank you very much and have a great afternoon. Mike Schmidt, a happy birthday. So thank you very much.